Orbitals, moving beyond the Bohr model. This video will introduce the concepts of orbitals, connecting the definition uh, with that of the quantum mechanical definitions we discussed back in our video on particle in a box. This is a pretty intense chart that you absolutely don't know enough to understand it completely and won't even by the end of Chem 1A, and that's okay. We can still use it to get some general impressions and visualize what orbitals are. We'll come back and revisit it from time to time as we learn more information. Big picture points I want you to take home from this right now. We can apply the same quantum mechanical understanding that we did for particle in a box up to hydrogen atoms. In addition to the energy levels represented by N, it also gives us subshells represented by L and orbitals represented by M sub L. And these have pretty neat complex shapes. We skimmed over the math for particle in a box we're skimming over the math even more for hydrogen atom, and of course, even more for multi-electron species, and that's okay too. However, we absolutely will use the results of all of those things, just like we did for particle in the box. It is important to understand that the pictures we use to talk about everything in the next few chapters can be calculated using those quantum mechanical principles, even if we don't do the calculations ourselves. These concepts are appearing more and more in news articles designed for the public as well, and the applications are growing, and you really should know going forward where these orbitals come from, even if you're not going to do the math to get there yourself. The simple pictures we use to visualize orbitals and talk about them in this class are really, really simple. The simplest drawings don't even attempt to show the change in probability density, and even the ones that make an effort tend to be half-hearted. This doesn't mean that they're wrong, uh, just that they're simplifying a concept. So when you look at an orbital drawing, you want to also remember that behind those simple drawings are these complex distributions. Now, let's zoom in a little bit and look at one tiny example to help make the concepts more digestible. So we're gonna just kind of zoom into this little area. In its simplest form, you'll often see an S orbit orbital represented as a sphere. This would seem to imply that there's a hard cutoff somewhere. In reality, it slowly fades, as in this picture, where it kind of fades off. You'll see this sort of image representing uh, whichever S orbital is being discussed, though higher energy S orbitals are more like concentric spheres, as shown in these pictures. In between each ring, the probability density goes to zero, and that's called a node. So when the probability density goes to zero, it's a node, just like when we were talking about particle in a box. You may also see graphs of probability density used to visualize the orbitals, as shown here. This gives a bit more detail to the way that the probability density changes throughout the ring structure. The picture with the blue concentric rings is attempting to do that through color. Now, if you go to the link shown here, uh, and you can click through it on the slides that are always posted, or you can also search for hydrogen electron orbitals by SCIVs, S-C-I-V-I's, um, it's on YouTube. They're gonna actually combine the idea of the graphs with these pictures, and basically it's the three-dimensional version of these pictures, and it's really cool, and I highly recommend checking it out. So why if orbitals are actually these complex distributions, do we re represent them so simply? <laughs> well, quite frankly, because it's hard to draw. Um, it's even hard to draw when using a computer unless you're pretty good with graphics or simulation software. And so simple shapes are used to make life easier when we're drawing things. But you still wanna be imagining the orbitals with these little details uh, that all of these different forms of the rep all these different forms and representations are showing you. We'll cover quantum numbers in a later video, but I'm going to include them on the slides for those who might be reviewing or who are already aware of quantum numbers. And so for now, if this is kind of your first time through, just ignore these. Later on, um, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now let's look at p orbitals. These are most frequently represented by pictures which look like these dumbbell shapes. Each energy level has three p orbitals, except for one which doesn't have any. Similar to our sphere, when we were talking about the s orbitals, this dumbbell shape is an oversimplification. Um, it, of course, doesn't end at a particular hard point, as these lines seem to imply, 
nor does the probability density equal throughout the space, right? It changes. There's some places where it's higher than others. The pictures of the orbitals that we started with show this change in probability density with changing colors, where the colors then fade to zero or out to black. Similarly, the creators use three dimensions to show a graph of this distribution. If you look at the YouTube linked here and discussed previously, um, you'll be able to see this. But I've taken a screen grab to show you one such orbital, but I really highly recommend going and watching the whole video. Now, obviously, this is just one orientation, but the differences between them would just be the axes that they're on. So you, you really just need the one to see what's going on. You can see here there are more than just S and P orbitals, and we'll discuss these as we move on. But hopefully this video gives you an idea of how to picture these orbitals as we move into our discussion of atoms. While you'd never be expected to draw this level of detail, you would just, have really, you would just draw the really simplified version, um, it's important for your understanding that you are picturing them in your head correctly. You'll never be asked to do differential equations either that we're used to solve for these, but it's important that you recognize that these are the solutions to those. It's also important that you remember that they're exact solutions for hydrogen atoms, but for anything with more than one electron, you're going to have to have approximate solutions to the mathematical process. And no, you don't have to know what that approximate process is either, just that it exists. In chemistry, of course, everything has layers, and this is no exception. If you're carefully paying attention, you'll notice um, there's things, there's careful lab labels and caveats. So for instance, these are labeled hydrogen probability density. The orbitals for multi-electron systems are a bit different, uh, but the general shapes are similar enough that it's okay to approximate them in your mind to the ones we're using here. When you get into lab classes, you'll use computer programs to calculate exactly what those orbitals look like, um, for both atoms and then for molecules. Uh, we're not going to get into uh, MO diagrams until much later in the class, and you won't be able to draw really complex ones until you get to lab. So for anything we're doing in this class, if I ask you to draw something, uh, you know, I ask you to draw an S orbital, you can just draw a circle, that's okay. If I ask you to draw a P orbital, you can just draw a dumbbell shape, that's okay. Uh, this is not in our class. So draw-wise, you can do simple. Uh, in terms of complexity and thinking-wise, make sure you can do this more complex version.